So here we are, we're now on step six. And step six, we need some of these components here. Uh, so first of all, we'll go to step six, we're gonna need our gearbox part, which is our B3 part, which is this little, this guy here, the side of the gearbox. We're also gonna need our MG1, our main gear one, which is one of these. We're also gonna need our B1 part, which is this little cap here. We're also gonna need our uh, BS9, and we're also gonna need one of our BB2 screws, which is the three by 12 millimeter screw. If you're building this to kit, the plastic bearings, the BD7s, but in my case, as you can see, I've got a tube of proper bearings, which I'm gonna replace those with. Pop these pieces together then. So, easy bit, you take your BS9, there we go, and we put that in there. It talks about putting grease on here, but as we're using bearings, we don't need to do that. Then you take your B1 part and your B3 part, and we need to pop the screw here, and you'll see there's like a little uh, lug here that comes up that goes inside, so it only goes in one way. So you literally put that in, take a screw in through the top and you just pop this through and tighten that up. So that's this one done. And don't go mad. There we go. And what we need to do is we need to take our bearings and pop our bearings in this side here and in this side here. So I'm just gonna reach across one of my bearings, make sure it's nice and home. And again here, make sure it's home. And then you're placing this through like that. There we are. That's it. That is step six completed. Right, so for step seven, we need some more parts. Um, we need again our MG1. We also need again our BS9, one of these guys. We also need our BT5, our counter gear. We need one of these. We're also gonna need our B4, our other half of the gearbox. We're also gonna need this shaft, which is a BD1, which is a five by 30 millimeter shaft. Uh, we need a spacer, which is the BC7, which is a five by 5.5 millimeter spacer. We need those. Uh, we need our metal bearings or in plastic bearings, so in our case, our 1150 size bearings and our 850 size bearing. Uh, we need that as well. Uh, and we need to pop these components again, like we did with step six, into the side of the gearbox. And that'll be then ready for me to grease both this side of the gearbox and the other side of the gearbox. Right, so once again, we're going to take our BS9 shaft and pop that through the main gear. Number one, and then we also need the collar to go onto there. So that's part A of the of part seven. That's the first part. The next part, we need to take our counter gear and we need to take our 850 bearing and pop that into the end of the counter gear, like so. And we then also need to take our 1150 bearing and pop that in the other side. So that's the counter gear. And then you have the shaft that will go through the middle. So that's the next part of this, of this step. Then we need to take the bearings again and pop these into our B4, like so. And the other side, there we are. So now we have our bearings in either side of the gearbox. And then what we need to do or do is pop these. So there's a, where the shaft on this counter gear, this, the five millimeter shaft, there's a little recess for it in the B4 side of the gearbox. You just locate that like so, it just rests in. And then we take our assembled axle and pop that through and then just make sure that that slips through like that. So there we are. 
So now we have step seven completed, ready for us to put grease on those gears and for the next part for step eight. Okay, we are now on step eight. And step eight, we're gonna need some more parts. So we're gonna need our differential spur gear, which is this guy here. That's quite a nice gear. We're gonna need our MG3s, which is our small bevel gears, which are these guys here. We're gonna need our BD2, our shafts, which three of those, we're gonna need these guys here. They're three by 14 millimeters. We can need our B66 shaft, which is a differential shaft. We need one of those. We need some BB2s, which are three of those, which are the three by 12 millimeter self-tapping screws. And we're gonna need our gearboxes that we made earlier. And we need to put all these together according to the drawing like this and put it into the gearbox and we need to grease everything up. So let's do the first part of this. Let's get our our small bevel gears and our differential gear together. So we take our bevel gear and we take it like this and we pop some of the grease that we need. Comes with the kit. Okay. Now on the other side, put a bit more grease. Kind of reminds me of plumber's grease this. It's quite a, a light grease. Um, maybe it is. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that got us go inside. So one of those goes inside there and you simply repeat that for each of the shafts. Take your bevel gear, there we are. And then pop your bevel gear in. And we need to really just grease this like it says in the manual. Rightio, so I've Greased everything up now at step nine. So I've put all the grease on the large bevel gears, all the grease on the counter gear, all the grease on our differential gear and small bevel gears. And you can see that I've actually put a lot of grease around the outside of the gearbox here to act as a seal. Um, so that's thanks to uh, the likes of uh, Pete Wiley and uh, Mark Bryan and Peter Smith. And uh, yeah, so we can now put the differential gear into our um, part here so we can do that so a little bit of grease on that shaft as well there's enough grease on there there we are and we can now take our differential gear and we can put that into place uh, onto our build shaft it should be like that and it should engage there and we can now put the two halves of the gearbox together and screw it together. And that should be like that. And then what we'll do is we'll screw this together and wipe it clean. So um, let's just pop that into place. There we are. Good. Let's still check of that to make sure it spins. And we screw it together um, using these screws. So you've got one here at the top, one here, and one that goes in the, uh, I believe it's in the, in this hole here. There we are. You have to excuse the noise. The uh, Royal Air Force <laughs> from uh, RAF Wittering or wherever have decided to do uh, over, uh, over um, domestic grounds. Uh, do some testing. Uh, wish I had something that could tell them to sod off. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, you know, <laughs> don't they have any consideration? Somebody's trying to film. Um, yeah. So there you are. That's the that's the gearbox now together, and you can see that I'm just screwing those screws in like so, and then making sure that they're tight and a quarter nip. There we are, and a quarter nip, and that should nicely seal up the gearbox as well so there we are they are nice and tight they're not going absolutely nowhere there we are like so and yeah gonna give this a little wipe down get rid of any excess grease it's now sealed and done what it needs to do and here we are this is the step eight completed so the gearbox is together cleaned up around the edges and that's now 
waiting for the next step. And there we are. We are now on step nine. Step nine, we need some more parts. We're gonna need this tie wrap, which is a large one for holding the motor wires. We're gonna need this D2 part here. We're gonna need these D1 parts here, which are spacers. We're gonna need this tiny little guy here, which is a BC4, the three millimeter grub screw. We need a couple of the BA5s, which are the three millimeter nuts and a couple of the BA1s, which are the three by six millimeter machine screws. And we're gonna need our 10 tooth pinion gear. And we need to install these components onto the motor and tie wrap the wires around. So, and little detail here is how to put the space, correct space between the pinion gear and the motor. There we are. Right, we should crack on and do that. So the first part of step nine is we need to strap the motor wires around. So you can see I've re-strapped those. I did actually re-solder these as well so that the wires were coming up and around so it looks a bit more neater. Um, so they're strapped in, um, that's, that's that bit done. And the next thing we need to do is we need to position the pinion gear onto the motor. And you notice I've popped the little screw ready into there into the screw hole already, so just use the Allen key to do that. And um, yeah, we need to put this in and we need to use a piece of paper to give us the right, um, the right gap. So it says to use, um, a position the pinion gear using the paper header from the screw bag. I've not got those because I've emptied those into my um, pots there. So what I'll do is I'll pop the screw in there ready. I'm just gonna use a piece of paper that I folded over. That should be ample. Um, sort of trying to replicate the thickness of the screw bag. And I'm just gonna pop that in. I'm just gonna tighten that up a little bit more just so it starts to bite the flat end of the motor pin of the motor um, that comes out. So there we go. So it, you can just move that along, but it stays on there. And I'm just gonna pop the paper in and push that down and then just gonna tighten that up. And I did put a little bit of thread lock on there. So the thread lock will set. So here we are, so that's the paper width, like it says. Right, so the next step here, we need to take our D2 part and we need to, on the D2 part here, we need to put some of the BA5 nuts into the screw there. So it's into the, and into there. We need to then take our D1 parts and pop those into the hole and push those down like so. So that holds them in and that holds the nuts in. And then we take our motor and our motor mount screws there. We need to line these up like so. And then we take our BA1 screws and we screw that into the motor mount. So we've put our screw, our BA1 screw into the motor mount. So that's one in there. And then the second one goes in there. Like so, just nip those up. Like so, there we are, that's nice and tight. Just check, quarter turn, quarter turn, that's fine. That's now step nine completed. Right, we are cracking on quite nicely now and we are now on step 10. Uh, step 10 is quite a busy little step. So we've got our gearbox assembly that we made in our previous steps and we've got our motor assembly that we've made in our previous steps. Uh, we now need to attach these components and the motor to the gearbox. And we do that using BA3, we need one of these, three by 15 millimeter uh, machine screw. Uh, BA4, which are three by 30 millimeter machine screws, and these are for the motor. And we're gonna use our B2 plate, which is here. Uh, we need our BB1s, which is a three by eight millimeter self-tapping screw. Uh, a BB2, which is a uh, three by 12 millimeter self-tapping screw. 
We've got a tapped step screw, which is a BB3, which is three by 21 millimeter. We need two of those. Our ball ends, which are two five millimeter ball ends. And we need a collar, which is the BD5, which is four by six millimeter, like a little small collar. We also need, like I say, BB2 for our engine cover, our motor cover. We need our D6 uh, and D5. We need our um, BS8, which is our wheelie bar. And we need our D10, which is our little wheel that fits inside. And we need to put all these components onto the gearbox and the motor onto the gearbox. Uh, so let's take the motor first of all. So we've got our motor that we made and we need to put this into the gearbox assembly here, like that. And we need to just move the, make sure the Tamiya logo is upright. I'm a little bit like that. I like to know it's, it's sitting upright. And then take our 30 millimeter long screws. And then we need to just locate where the screw wheel hole is. And the same again on the other side of the motor. So again, put it through and then just give it a couple of turns just to make sure that it's got the motor, which it has. And now we can take our screwdriver and we can tighten that down. So that will be the motor in place. So if you break down the next step out of step 10, you've got the little um, five millimeter ball ends, which we need to put onto these uh, D6s and D5 parts. Um, so we need to put the ball end in this end piece. Okay, so again, just take the, just take your uh, ball end, get it started with your finger if you can. And then once it's straight, you could use the box wrench, and there we are. And then when you screw these in, um, as it's going into plastic, you really don't need to go mad. So there you are. That's how you do that step. So the next step here, we take our D5 and D6 parts. So you see here, I've installed the D5 part on this side of the gearbox. Okay, so how you go about that, again, take your, this is the other side, the D6. You'll get it right, it'll just slide straight into place. There's no forcing or anything like that. And then you take the three, um, three millimeter by 21 millimeter, it's a step screw, and you pop that into place. And then you simply case, or screw that into place. There you go, quarter turn. So that's the next little part of step 10. The next little part of here is we need to put the little wheel into the collar and into the three by 15 millimeter um, screw. Um, you notice here, actually, I've noticed a little thing that Tammy have missed. They've missed the little uh, B5 nut. Um, yeah, there you go. But uh, there's only one of its kind inside the A bag, so you won't miss it. Uh, this is a case of you pop the collar into the wheel, into the wheelie bar, which is up this way around, as you can see. Uh, you then pop your three by 15 millimeter screw, it's a machine screw, through, out the other side. And this is gonna collect on here. And you screw that tight. And again, use your box wrench on one side and you screw it the other side and you screw this tight. So it doesn't go no more, there you are. I found a little area that I'm not quite happy with, um, with the way the wheelie bar attaches to the back of the gearbox. It's going to be putting a lot of pressure into this plastic gearbox. So I'd like to put some kind of little buffer in there, some cloth tape, almost like uh, duct tape. I'm going to cut this into strips and see if I can put some protection along there. Let's see what we can do. So uh, what I've tried to do here is almost like put a gasket between the gearbox and I don't know if you can pick out on the gearbox, kind of put an edge around there. And hopefully when we put this onto this, it should help. So let's put it on and see what it looks like. So the idea is it looks kind of like that. And as you can see, we've got a little gasket between there. So hopefully that might just soften that edge. We shall see. Right, and finishing off the step 10, we've put the BB2, 
which is the three by 12 in this side. And we've got to put the BB1, which is the three by eight in this side. Okay, and catch some threads. There we go. There we are, nice and done. That's now the wheelie bar in place.